When I was a young boy in England, first looking at art in the 1950s, this artist, Henry Moore, epitomized everything about contemporary art in the public's mind, contemporary back then, of course. Wonky figures with holes in them, you saw them in cartoons, often made fun of. But in fact, this sculpture here shows Henry Moore at the absolute apogee of his skills and, fa and fame. Uh, Henry Moore uh, was an artist who believed in what he called truth to materials. It was the great modernist dictum that British artists took to an extreme. And Moore believed that a true sculpture had to be carved and that the act of carving, in the act of carving, rather like Michelangelo felt, you bring out the sculpture that's already inside the block. Uh, Henry Moore did human figures all the time, even if they may not look like it uh, at, at first sight, but I think you can see here the reclining form, the head there coming down, a sort of an arm there that merges into the sculpture, and then these sort of leg shapes. But the direction that these forms go in have actually been determined by the grain of the wood. Moore has allowed the grain of the wood to have a sort of with a dialogue with him to act, literally shape the sculpture. So on the top here you see this kind of, this very, very large, whatever it is, knee or knuckle or whatever it is, but the, the way the, the grain goes around there. You see the grain here forming a kind of a kneecap and another one on the inner uh, leg. Henry Moore was famous for the holes in his sculpture. And he put those holes in them because he felt that when you looked at a sculpture from one side, you needed to have a sense of its depth, its, dim its dimension. And so the holes allow you to get a sense of the, the full size, the full shape of the sculpture, even when you stand on one side. Of course, we would normally show something like this in the round, so you could walk around it, and I've actually got a few letters criticizing me for putting the Henry Moore up against the wall. But I did so in a way because it makes a great vista as you walk down the hallway through the galleries, but also because it allows those holes, those famous holes of Henry Moore, uh, to work uh, sort of at full throttle. When Henry Moore was a young man, he regarded bronze as something as false. It was like lying to him. You weren't really working with the materials. Um, but as he became much more successful and much more famous in the 1950s and 60s, and big commissions started to roll in, he changed the way he worked. He began to work in bronze, he had a large studio, a foundry, and many assistants that, who were working with him. And towards the end of his life, Henry Moore just basically directed um, the, his assistants what to do. I visited his studio at Much Haddam and was very disappointed as a young romantic student to discover that Henry Moore didn't touch any aspect of his sculptures at all. And as my professor said, well, you know, Raphael didn't paint everything himself, so why should Henry Moore do everything himself? But I do find it ironic that at the end of his life, uh, Henry Moore uh, was working in a way that went against everything that made him famous. That said, when Henry Moore himself was asked to play favorites, he said that this was possibly the finest work of art he ever made.